What's up guys, my name is Devin and welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. Today's video is actually part one of a two part series that goes into fall protection for roofers. So part one breaks down to the components, configurations, and best practices of several different fall protection systems. We cover the bucket fall protection system, counterweight systems, permanent fixed systems, and then also mobile fall protection systems. <laughs> Today we get to have a conversation that I've been waiting to have for years, which is about fall protection systems for roofers. So I wanted to make sure that if I was gonna have this conversation, I was gonna bring in some relevant and credible help. So today I'm gonna to be joined by David Vivas and Travis Carew from our Florida branch, and then David Ivy from Malta Dynamics. So I'm gonna have these guys introduce themselves so you know a little bit about their background. Maybe start with David. I'm mostly in the project management side of things here. Travis does a lot more sales, especially in the roofer kits. I've been in the whole and crane uh, business for 40 some years been in the fall protection business for about 20 here with FHS and then what about you Travis when did you come into the game and start working with David and become the dynamic duo that is down in Florida yeah <laughs> thanks for that so I've been uh, I've been with FHS about four years and, and started in fall protection um, learning from David Vivas who like he said he's got 20 years of experience and if you could uh, if you could name it out in the out in the field out in uh, out in the area, he has seen it and done it and found a way to keep people safe um, while they're while they're working at heights. So um, yeah, just uh, trying to keep uh, everybody going home safe at the end of the day and, and do a, do our part to um, help these contractors and, and companies uh, keep their employees safe. Awesome, and then what about you, Mr. David Ivey? What was your background with fall protection? How'd you get started with Malta Dynamics? And just kind of take us through your background. I've been with Malta Dynamics for two years now. I started in as the product development engineer, so I was designing uh, you know, all your fall protection products. I was the lead engineer here, and I have our seat on the ANSI Z359 committee, so I'm helping write the standards uh, for these fall protection systems and things like that. I'm slowly transitioning into um, the sales rep for the X-Series Mobile Grabber, which is a mobile fall protection system. A little background on multi-dynamics. We've been in business for about five years now. Um, we're a fall protection manufacturer. We do anything from your standard uh, roof anchors all the way up to mobile fall protection, uh, safety harnesses, um, and things like that. And we're out here just to make sure everybody's safe um, and everybody goes home at the end of the day. If somebody just has a little bit of something, they have a small truck, they have kind of a small setup, they don't have a big budget, where do you start them as far as fall protection uh, to keep them safe on a roof? Yeah, so we, uh, we kind of call it, uh, you know, in the industry, a lot of people call it compliance in a can um, because that's what it is. So you have a standard bucket kit. Um, so it just comes in a five gallon bucket. Um, we'll go into the, the details of what's inside. So you, you generally talk about the ABCs of fall protection. Um, so it comes with a, an anchor. So this is just a standard uh, butterfly roof anchor. Uh, so this can be attached. It goes through the sheathing into a truss. Um, and you just in, you can install it by the nails, um, which uh, they come included with these. Uh, the, the 16 penny nail does come included. Um, now you can in, in, install by screws, um, and that is this is the, one of the easiest anchors you, you can get on the roof. Um, and then um, so standard for residential roofing is something like this. Um, these are a 5,000 pound anchor. Um, so as long as your substrate can withstand that, um, these can be installed. Um, they pack down really nice. As you can see, um, so they're easy to, to carry and they're really light. So then uh, they also come with a full body harness. Um, so these are just a standard uh, full body harness here. I have a multi-dynamic brand harness. Um, they have a, let's see here, you got the chest here. So you have just a standard pass-through chest as well as pass-through legs which are, this is kind of standard in the market for uh, the bucket kits. Um, your roofers typically use these, they're very lightweight. Um, there's, no, there's no padding on it. Um, so it's, it's very, uh, you know, if you're, you're working in Florida, they're worried about heat. So if you're looking for something like that, you don't want it to be loaded with padding or anything like that. And they're very cost effective. Um, so that's kind of the, the, uh, the harness that comes with them. However, um, 
there you can upgrade the harnesses. So if you were to want a nicer harness that has the padding and all the bells and whistles, you can have that added on as well. Because I was going to ask, you know, roofers come in all shapes and sizes. So as far as like figuring out what harness is going to be a good fit for you, because proper fit is everything. If you're too big with a too small harness, it's just not going to do what it's supposed to do. So are they sized or how, how do you figure that part out about what size bucket you need for the roofer that's going to take it? So this, the harness that comes in the standard bucket kit is the small, medium, large, universal. However, there are sizes uh, XL to 2XL and a 3XL. Um, and you'll see that amongst uh, all manufacturers, uh, whether it's a multi-bucket kit or, um, you know, different manufacturers. Uh, so there's generally different sizes. So you'll want to make sure that your workers are properly fitted. Um, it's a big thing is uh, a lot of people just say, hey, this harness is for the company and they toss it in the bed of the truck and they assume everybody's uh, fit in it. Um, and that's not the case. Uh, you need to make sure they're properly fitted um, because if you were to take a fall and it's not properly fitted, it's not pretty. Um, and uh, there's pictures out there if you want to look it up, um, but you will not like it. Um, I'll second that. You're going to not like any photos that you look at as improperly fit um, harnesses. I wasn't ready when I saw those images. I'm still trying to work through the pain of seeing it. Um, so speaking of falls though, so is this a one use system? Like if, you, if you're wearing the system and then you fall, is it once and discard or is it reusable after a fall? Yeah, you, you, you'll, wanna, you'll wanna remove it from service uh, because your, um, your full body harness will have uh, load indicators on them. Um, so those will likely be tripped. Um, but in the case of a, in the case of a fall, you always want to inspect your systems and things like that. And majority of these uh, components like this, you would remove from service. Um, some of the larger systems will hit on later. Um, you may not have to remove from service. It may just uh, require a competent person inspection. But the things that come in the the bucket kits, they they will need to remove from service. Yeah, cool, makes sense. So what else is in that bucket? Okay, so the the last thing in the bucket kit is a vertical lifeline assembly. So this vertical lifeline assembly is a, comes in a 25 or 50 foot rope. Um, there's some larger ones out there. Um, you know, you get up to 100 foot rope and things like that. Um, but your standard bucket kits generally run at 25 or 50 foot. Um, so all it is a standard rope with a um, snap hook on one end and then just a knot on the other so you can adjust. Um, so this here connects to your anchor point, um, the butterfly anchor we hit on earlier. Um, and then we have the the rope grab, which comes pre-installed on it. And what this is, is it attaches to, to your back D-ring. And so it's attached to your back D-ring and you can work your way through the rope. So it just moves pretty smoothly here. And if you were to fall, it'll stay. Um, so it, it arrests your fall um, and it does have a shock pack on it. And this is for your um, energy absorption device. Um, so if you were to take a tumble, this will deploy um, and elongate out of the shock pack here. Um, so, so I know when you guys are specking out fall protection systems, you have to take into account the fall, right? It, I can't remember the distance. Is it six foot or like what's the fall distance that you you have to have specced into a, a system? It depends on the, the components you're using um, and the height you're at. Um, so if you're using, let's say, these these kits here, you have to look into the elongation of the rope, the um, deceleration distance of your um, your device, um, and then it's, it's manufactured manufacturer specific so you'll want to open the instructions and look and see kind of because you, you'll want to look at the full body stretch because if you once you fall that harness will stretch out um, some manufacturers and harness have stretchy harnesses that are kind of elastic um, so those you have to add in more of a fall clearance uh, for your calculations yeah. um, but then if you get into another you know an overhead it depends if you're doing you know, tying off a foot level or overhead tie off so it really depends on um, the situation, what numbers you use. So it's job site specific. So you can't say, you know, hey, John, make sure if you're 10 foot off the ground, you know, you have to look at the job site, how high you're working in the, the equipment you're using. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, that, that system, he just went over there, uh, over there, the roof bucket, bucket system. It's important to note too, that that is a reusable anchor. So this kit is not for one job, it's for every job until you take a fall. The only thing you're doing, you're, you're, you're nailing in those 16 penny nails. And then at the end of the job, when you get to that top of the roof, you're, you're backing those nails out and uh, you're putting it back in the bucket and going to the next one. Um, that system is more designed for fall restraint than it is fall protection. 
So when you're trying to calculate that height, you, you don't necessarily need to if that system is set up the correct way because it's not going to allow you to come off the roof. It's going to, if you slip and fall, it's going to lock up and you're going to fall on the roof surface, not off the side. Exactly. You shouldn't have enough rope out that that you create a swing fall or you you free fall off the side of the roof. You should never have a knot um, not tied into the end um, that, that allows you to go past the edge of the roof, if you will. So, so then what would be the next step up? So, you know, bucket systems is a pretty good uh, base model for kind of everybody. What would be the next step up from that? Travis and I have experience with counterweighted systems we install for people that are non-penetrating systems for flatter roofs. And there's also counterweighted uh, skid carts that you can tie off to that are made specifically uh, for people to tie off to, sometimes multiple tie-off points on it that you can roll along the roof and again, set it up for fall restraint or fall protection. But there's a whole myriad of devices for, for roofers to use, uh, depending on their situation. And there's also guard railing uh, that's counterweighted that can be temporarily put up. And say, if you got an HVAC system that you're gonna work on and it's real close to the edge of the roof, uh, counterweighted guard railing can be put up between the unit and the edge of the roof. And uh, there's just, they're just a myriad of systems so uh, we want to encourage customers to go over that stuff with us and we can look and uh, see what's the best application for them. And uh, the guardrail system is something that can be moved around on a roof from application to application. Uh, a lot of people don't want any penetrations on a roof because they're worried about it being sealed and leaking if it's a bonded roof especially. And then we can go up to David Ivey, we'll explain that uh, the, the positives of a grabber if you're working along the lead edges of the roof or just a little ways in. Uh, David will go over that with you. But there's a myriad of items out there. Travis and I have covered them all and we've installed all of them. And some of our workers use all of them too. So when they're doing installation work. You made a really good point about like guardrail systems because the the hierarchy of controls for fall protection, you know, if you can eliminate the hazard, go for it. If you can't, see if you can control it a little bit with like exactly. a guardrail or something like that. Um, and then you go into your arrest and, and everything else. So I think that's a good point is maybe, you know, it's possible that you might not even need a bucket system at all. If you can figure out how to put some kind of device to separate you from the fall, you, you'd be clear. So there there is a lot more ways than just buying a harness or buying a fall protection system to keep your workers safe. That's a really good point. As uh, David would hit on you know the guardrails and things like that you can have permanent rooftop systems so these are designed by you know professional engineer you'd have the install crew that go on they install these permanently into the roof surface and there's a horizontal lifeline and these can be attached to the roof surface this will allow numerous workers to tie off and those that stay on the roof permanently you know they're anchored in so that's one thing you have as well as we have the grabber non-penetrating it's not on your roof surface generally you place it on the ground and it's a mobile fall protection system it can boom up to 34 feet in the air and provide tie off for up to five workers depending on the model so if you're working on that roof you would let's say put it over the gutters you don't need to boom it over the center of the roof because your fall hazard is off the roof so you position it that way and your workers if they're working on the edge um, they take a fall they fall off the roof you don't have to worry about the uh, the lifeline coming in contact with an edge or anything like that and these are mobile they get pulled onto your job site with a pickup truck and they get set up in minutes and it's really nice very safe so I've talked to a couple of people about like a rigid track versus like lifeline systems. And I know a lot of people kind of freak out over like with lifelines and you know, those are a little bit soft and there's gonna be more give. If it's rigid track, it's solid. And the only thing that moves is me. Now, when you're looking at like a grabber system, you got that boom extended all the way out. How much give is there when the fall is, you know, happening? Does it move at all? Is it pretty solid? It's very solid. Um, there, there is some give um, depending on, you know, the weight you drop on it. However, with the grabber, we require the use of a class B self-retracting lifeline. What that means is, is there the maximum uh, resting force is 900 pounds. Looking at it um, compared to, you know, a cable system, things like that. Yeah, there may not be a lot of give, but if you look into the forces of it, it's probably very comparable. Um, even though it's a very rigid system, um, there are some give, but it depends on the components you're attaching to it. From like the bucket system to the different controls that we can do for fall protection all the way up to the grabber, how much training goes into the actual proper use of these systems? Typically, most of the systems, uh, you can train an individual, not a group, but you can train an individual in less than an hour on most of these systems. If we get in a big, big group, Travis and I, we usually uh, teach 
donning the harness properly and fit test people, and that can get drug out to so it's a lot longer if we're doing that. And uh, but roofing kits, you can explain that just like David Ivy showed you there. That's relatively quick training. We, we teach them to do the pre-use inspection, proper donning of the harness, proper usage. You know, ideally, like Travis said. It's good to set up those bucket kits to use it for fall restraint rather than fall protection if you can. And so David Ivey, I'll, I'll pitch this to you because you spend a lot of time working with the grabber specifically. So I know that this system, best case, is, you know, you sell it and it becomes part of somebody's job site, right? You know, they hook it onto their truck, then as they're going from, from site to site to, to perform work, they've got their fall protection system behind them. They just have to drive it in place, drop the, uh, the anchor points, and then start erecting it and getting ready to go. How long does it typically take you to train a guy um, or a girl or whatever team to break all that down, to understand how to put it all together and how to use it effectively? like that first time when we're doing our on-site trainings or virtual trainings it only takes a couple hours um, for the grabber specific um, but however we the way we do the grabber training is is we assume they know fall protection you know they're properly trained to do the harness stuff like that they at least have some of the background knowledge so we you know it's more equipment specific um, so we'll do a, a classroom session you know go through a quick PowerPoint um, and then go out and do some you know hands-on training with it, run it up and down, uh, tie people off to it and show them best practice, best use. So you're looking at, let's say, uh, two hours, uh, three max, um, depending on, you know, the group size and things like that and how many people want to, you know, get their hands on the machine. Um, but it's, it's relatively quick if you, you know, if you think about if you're not trained, the consequences uh, both ways. If you buy a bucket kit from us, you don't necessarily need us to come on site. There's enough videos out there that manual teaches you enough. I mean, we'd love to come on site and train a, a group of your your roofers, um, but it but it's not necessary because that that system is built for you to buy off the shelf, have on your person, and then know how to use it just by going through the manual or watching a short video online like the one we're doing here or one where they they break out what each thing is used for and how to install it. And so that's all for part one. Make sure you come back to check out part two where we talk about the issues with fall protection in general for the roofing industry. We talk about regulations and who's actually responsible for enforcing that. And then we close down with some final considerations that you should really consider before specking out your new fall protection system. Mm -hmm.